Hello everyone, today I'm gonna show how I created this cinematic animation in Blender using my Raptor. If you're interested, you can find the beast on the Blender market, the link will be in the description. First, to warm up a bit, let's create a simple render using an HDRI and the model. In Blender, I delete the default cube and the light. And before importing the Raptor, click on Scene Collection, so the next collection you add will be at this level. To import the Raptor, you go on File, Append, you select the Raptor, you go in Collections and you select the Raptor Collection. And then you click on Append. Okay, now you have the Raptor in your scene. Let's create a new collection. Let's call it NN, like Not Needed. And you will move all those objects in this new collection. So you select everything, you press M on your keyboard and you select NN. Now you can disable the NN collection. Let's talk a bit about the multi-resolution function that you have with the Raptor. You click on the mesh in Object Mode and you go in the modifier properties and here you will see the multi-res modifier. For the viewport, you can change the value from 0 to 6. Of course, 0 is with less details and 6 maximum details. But as we are mostly in solid mode for the viewport and it will be mainly used for animation, I don't see the point of using 6. So I personally like to go for 0 to maximize my frame rates. For the render value, if your computer can handle it, I recommend using 5. This is what I use for my renders. But if it's too much, you can lower the quality until you have something that suits your hardware. Okay, now let's add an HDRI. You go on polyheaven.com, you click on Browse HDRIs, and you search one, for example, named Monk. You click on it, and you download the 8K version. Back in Blender, you go in Shading. Here, you select World. You press Shift A and search, and you look for environment texture. Then you plug the color to the color and you select the HDRI you just downloaded. Now you check that you have Node Wrangler activated. You go in Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. You look for Wrangler and you check the, this box if it's not already the case. You go back in Shading, you click on the environment texture and you press Ctrl T on your keyboard. So now you can rotate your HDRI if you need to. And just to be sure that our HDRI is correctly installed, we press Z and we go in Render View. Yes, it's working fine. So I'll go back in Solid View and now we will frame our camera. So I select my camera and I press 0 on the keyboard. Then you press N and you tick Camera to View if it's not already the case. That will allow us to stay in camera mode and reframe our shot. So let's say I want something like that. And let's change a few settings in the camera. So you click on the camera, you go in the camera icon and you activate the depth of field if it's not already the case. Then you go in lens and let's change the lens to 100 millimeter. In the depth of field section, let's add the focus object that should be the eye. So I right in, this, in that case. So I right, let's change the f-top to 1.4 and the blades to 5 and now I will reframe my shot like this I don't want his mouth to be that big open so we will fix that using the rig quickly but don't worry we will come back on the rig in a few minutes so to use the rig you click on it and then you go in pause mode to go in pause mode you can use control tab on your keyboard or you can simply change here to pause mode now that we are in pause mode you select this rig the green one and you press R and X to rotate on the X axis and you just close his mouth like this. Before we test the render, let's check the render settings. For the resolution, for now, let's stay in uh, Full HD, so 1920 to 1080. For the render properties, of course, you, we are using cycles. And for the render settings, I use 0 0.01 for the noise threshold. And for the max samples, I will go for 2048 but you can use a lower value and a higher value depending on your hardware. I will activate the denoise and for my case, I'm using optics. Okay, everything else is by default. Let's render this. So render and render image. Okay, that's it. So with my computer, it took only 35 seconds to render this image. And for your information, I have a 3080. And for the CPU, it's an i7. And as you can see, in just a few clicks, we have a beautiful render that we can share with our friends or on our social media. From there, what we could do is to change the color grading a bit, just to have a preview of what we will have later. So you go in Render Properties, you go on the bottom and you select Color Management. 
And here for the look, you go for a very high contrast and maybe you turn the exposure to two. Now let's take the render again. Yeah, as you can see, there is more contrast and the final image might look like this when we finish the grading in DaVinci Resolve later. Before we start the animation, let's see what is possible to do with the rig. First, I will hide my camera from the viewport. And then to test the rig, you click on the rig and you go in pause mode. Once again, you can press Ctrl Tab on your keyboard or simply change here to pause mode. Here, all the different controls of the rig are yellow, green, blue, and red. For more clarity, you can go in the object data properties and select which control you want to display or not. Personally, I like to display everything. So you just click on the first one, then you press Shift on your keyboard and you click everything to display all the controls. Then the idea is you can animate each of these controls with keyframes. Let me show you an example. So I will grab my timeline a bit here. For the keying, I will select location, rotation and scale. So it's done for us. And let's click on the control, for example, this one. I will press I on my keyboard to add a keyframe. And I will change now the position, maybe at frame 30. So I can press G to move it, or I can press R to rotate this control. So let's try to move it a bit. So G, and I will lower it a bit like this, and press I again to add another keyframe. And maybe I will copy the first keyframe to maybe here, frame 50. So now if I play the animation, as you can see, it's very easy. I just added three keyframes for this control, and my Raptor is moving. He's doing some uh, fitness, some exercise. <laughs> so now you get the idea. You can do that with all those different controls. I'm talking of controls, let me show you the main ones. So first we'll start with the yellow ones. So this one is the main control that controls the body. And as I told you, you can move it with a G or you can simply rotate it. Okay. And then you have the different controls for the tail. I like to move this one, the third one. You press G and you can, you can move it. Or if needed, you can also move the last one and the second one. This one, I like to rotate it. And then for the yellow controls, you also have one for the head. So if I click on this control, I can press a G and move the, the head. And you can also rotate it. So R and Y, for example, on the Y axis. R and Z, R and X. You also have one for the feet. So if we click on these uh, this yellow circles, you press G, you can move the feet, and all the leg will come with it. And finally, you have the controls for the knees. Press G, and you can move it. And then you have the green controls. You have those one for the spines. And as usual, you can move them with G, or you can rotate them. And I didn't tell you yet, but you can select multiple controls by pressing shift and clicking on the controls and then you can move them all at once. I will not go through all the different green controls but I think you get the idea. For the head you can use this control to move the head only and not the neck. Usually, usually I'm using rotation for this control and for the jaw you should use this one and the rotation is R and X to open and close the mouse. You could use R and Y if you want, but it's, but it's a little bit weird. So it's very easy to have an animation from mouth op uh, closed to mouth open, for example. You just add a keyframe and then you go on another frame and R, X, like this, and you add another keyframe and maybe you close that here. And I press spacebar, so you have this uh, little animation. And then you have those controls also for, for the eyes. If I click on the bottom one, for example, let's go in frame one, and I press I to add a keyframe, R, Z, and I. And then I will close that here. So it's frame 10, and maybe let's use frame 20, so frame 10. And I will do the same for the top one. Add a keyframe first, frame 10, RZ, something like that, maybe more, I again, and then back to initial position. And if you want, you can select both of them. You copy 
those keyframes and you paste them here and maybe here. And now your Raptor is blinking. Okay. If the blink animation is too slow, you can easily move those keyframes closer to each other like this. And then I will delete everything and you can repeat again the process wherever you want. So now it's blinking faster. Okay, cool. For the eyes, you also have this control to move the eye. Let me go in render view so you can have a better view. So you click on this red control and maybe you can do a rotation on the Z axis. So R and Z. And as you can see, you can move uh, the eye and on the Y axis also if you want. Okay, now let me show you those controls. So for the eye, you have two controls and the number one is for the iris, the pupils. Not sure what is the word in English, but look at his eyes. And if you move this console with G, as you can see, it's very easy to animate the iris of uh, the raptor. The eye control number two is for the internal membrane. So if I press G and I move it, as you can see, it's like a blink, but specific to the raptors. It's uh, the what I what we call the internal membrane. Now let me show you the other controls. Uh, we have the snort. So snort number one is for the nose. As you can see, this animation. And snort number two, actually we will see better if using the render view. Okay, for snort number two, if I press G and I move it, as you can see here, it's like an animation on the upper part of the face. I like to use this for to simulate the breathing with the nose. And then finally, you have those different controls for the snarl. So I press G to move it. And as you can see, you can move all those uh, different uh, muscles. And there are some controls that I like to use also. It's uh, those blue ones. For example, this one. Let me show you. So if I press I, and maybe in frame 20, I just move it like that. And I again. And I repeat only those last two, like that. And now, as you can see, you have like a breathing animation. And you can do that for, for all the different controls here and here. I mean, everywhere. Yeah, that's it for the rig. All those controls give you the flexibility you need to create uh, organic animations. And one thing before we start to work on an animation, if you want to scale the, the Raptor, you just have to click on the rig and you press S and move your mouse to scale it. Everything, the rig and the mesh will be uh, scaled. Okay, great. Now let's work on the animation. For the animation, we will reproduce my final scene with the Raptor roaring. First, let's define our camera frame so we know what part of the dinosaur we will need to animate. So I press 0 on the numpad and let me change the camera focal length to 85. Yeah, maybe something like that. And let me frame my raptor. For my project, I wanted a close-up shot. So I'll place the camera around, around here. Not too close because I know that I'll add a dolly movement at the end. Okay, that's it for the camera frame. Let's make the animation 60 frames. If I simulate the result, it should be something like... First, let's click on the rig, then control tab to go in pose mode. I will grab this control. So he's pulling his head back a bit with his neck and then boom, he's roaring. Now I will reorganize my windows to have a better view of the animation. So just come here and you grab the window, something like that. And here I will stay in camera mode. I press N, view. I untick camera to view. I just zoom on the image here and I press N to remove, no sorry, I remove all the different tools and T. So we have a clean image here. And here we can play with the dinosaur controls. We want to animate first uh, maybe this control to go from there. So I add a keyframe first, I, and then around frame 27, I will pull the head back with the neck, something like that, and press I again. Then it needs to be fast, so maybe just seven frames like that. And boom. And I again. Let me test. Okay. We will fix this uh, little neck issue after. 
And one thing that you don't want when you animate the raptor, you don't want it to stay still like this, you know. When you finish the animation at frame 34, it's not a reason for the raptor to stay still like this. It's very, it's very weird that it's not moving after frame 34. So what I like to do, I like to add some, uh, I'd like to add another keyframe until the end on the same direction. So at frame 60, I will continue to animate the raptor a bit. So I know that he's moving a bit so I and now okay maybe it's a little bit too much okay something like that okay cool we have this issue because the neck and the head are moving but not the body at all so we should fix that and I like to use this control for that so I press I and I think it was frame 27 actually let me add the mark let me check yes so m to add a mark here and m to add another mark here i go back on this control and i know from here i will move it up g and you move it until yeah until you don't have this little issue anymore and you press i so now as you can see i don't have this uh, neck issue anymore and now i will place uh, this control back to the original position so i copy the original position and here where i have my mark we paste the original position so we have this okay that's good for now let me change the camera angle just a bit i press n camera view and uh, maybe something like that and one thing i forgot to do with the camera if you want a cinematic look you go you click on your camera you go on output properties and here for the Y you change it to 810 to have this uh, cinematic, cinematic ratio. So now maybe let me let me reframe it a bit. Now we can do the same for this control. We don't want it to stay still so we can animate it just a bit to have a little motion for a more organic feel. Let me go in frame 60 and I will move it a bit like that. something like that let me test yes you know it's and he's going forward when i look at the animation i feel that my raptor is not going back enough with his head so i will change that i go back on this control and at the 27 frames i will just move it back a little bit more yeah something like that let me test again yeah and now he's a pulling his, uh, his head and he's uh, shouting. And one thing we could do right now, if he's shouting here, maybe we can, yeah, uh, from there, we see his neck, the muscle of his neck, boom. And from there, with this one, we can press I and we can give it some volume, you know, like that just to show that he's using his throat to 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 roar okay so this one is pretty okay this one this control is okay now let's take care he hide the camera let's take care of the upper part of the head and what i don't like right now is that we are going the movement in only one axis so let me add a keyframe here and when I go back, maybe I want to turn my the, the head a bit. Like something like that. Just like that. And here, when he's going here, maybe I want to go back. Um, something like that. Or maybe the other side. So let me test. Yes, cool. And when he is roaring... We also maybe want his head to do some little animation like this and maybe the other side like this and then he could come back maybe like this. Yeah, it's too much. It's way too much. I press N and it was on the X okay and here i again let me test okay like 
okay, now it's cool. You know, he's shaking his head a bit. Okay, cool. And maybe what we could add is here. Maybe he could turn a little bit um, in our direction. So X, sorry, no Z. So we could we could we could come back on this on the frame thirty four, and on this control um, R and Z, and maybe turn like this a bit, and then he's coming back. Or maybe let's do the opposite. Let me, yeah, let's do the opposite. He's going like this, but then at the end, he's turning towards us like this in our direction. I. Now I see that my head is missing some movements on the Z axis, I mean up to down. So we could fix that. And here we could move it uh, on the Z. I say, oh, it's X. Sorry, move it like that, like that. Okay, and maybe let's take this value here for the X. Uh, yeah, it was X. Then use the same value here. It's going up and down. Why down? Because I didn't. Press I, yes, and I again. Now it's okay. Now it's only going up. So let me grab this again. Okay, and maybe we want it to be a little bit more. I press Shift, yeah, like this. Cool. <laughs> It's looking cool. And maybe when he's pulling his head back, he could be more like this, maybe. And so, yeah, cool. Now I have some issue here on this area because uh, I feel that it's very uh, static. So let's animate those controls a bit. Yeah, cool. You know, all his body is moving now. It's, it's so cool. And for the arms, they're a little bit too static for my test. Yeah, cool. Now we can take care of um, the mouth. So for the original position, let's press I. Or maybe I will close it a little bit more. Something like that. On frame 27, let's open it a bit like that and then for the frame 34 let's have it wide open rx yeah something like that let's test uh, yes i like the test but then i realized that my tutorial is already 24 minutes long sorry guys <laughs> Concerning the animations, I think you got the idea now. Just animate as many controls as possible when moving a part of the body and try to avoid staying still. If you have my Raptor and you want my animation files, just email me and come on my Discord server, I will send you the files. My email will be in the description. Now for the camera animation, it's pretty simple. I just created a dolly movement and used the Shakeify add-on. So here you insert a keyframe at position at frame number one. And here at frame 60, you just zoom a bit on your dinosaur. As you can see here on this window, you can see that my camera is moving just a bit. Actually, let me activate the plane so you can see better. So here, as you can see, I'm moving forward my dinosaur and then I add another keyframe. And for the interpolation mode for this camera movement, I think it was a linear. So your camera will have the same speed for the entire animation. And then on top of that, I use the Shakeify add-on. This is a free add-on. If you, you want to learn more about this add-on, please check this video. It will uh, 
pop right now on the screen. The shake I selected was the wedding and the influence was 0.6. Okay, that's it for the camera animation. Once again, it was pretty simple. For the plants and trees, of course, there is the HDRI for the background. And in my case, I used the botanic add-on. As usual, I'm using this add-on because there is everything that I need. Trees, plants, rocks, weeds, everything. They are all high quality and photorealistic. And in just one click, you can place uh, the assets in your scene. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. But don't forget that you also have a free alternative like the Max 3 pack. I already mentioned this pack in a previous video, but just in case, I will put the link in the description. So for the plants, I just spawn some assets and then place them manually in my scene. And I just use Alt D to duplicate them around. In the background, I also placed a couple of trees for the shadows. And for the ground, you just have to create a plane and apply a texture to it. Or you can simply color it in brown, because in my case, we will not see it in camera, but we use it for the light reflection on the dinosaur. Concerning the light, I only use the Monk HDRI. I didn't change the rotation or the intensity. So it was all by default only the Monk HDRI. But for my case, I also added this light, which is a simple point light, the power to 1000 and the color to white. Let's say that the Raptor is in the middle of the viewport. So the intersection of the X axis and Y axis. So the light, let me show you the position of my light is around here. So it's uh, four meter for X, one meter for Y, and six meter for Z, if you want to replicate my light. And the idea of this light is just to give some punch to uh, the top of the top head of the dinosaur to give more contrast. And then for the render, I think I already showed you everything for the render, but concerning the color management, I use uh, Filmic to have a flat image and look known and exposure to zero. Because as I told you before, I like to grade my images in DaVinci Resolve. And for the different camera angles, I like to create a separate file for each one of them. And for example, for the eye shot, I have another file. So the idea of uh, creating a file for each shot is that you can uh, move the plants around and cheat a bit to have the effect that you want. Because if I was zooming on the eye on the other configuration, I might not have all those plants around. So, so having a file for each camera angle lets you cheat a bit for the scene setup and for the lighting to have exactly what you need. I really think you should first set up your lights and your different environment, even if you have to move it a little bit, but at least you already done all the job before duplicating all the files. Okay, I think that's it for Blender. We can now render all the animations. And let's meet in DaVinci Resolve for the final composition. Okay, now we are in DaVinci Resolve. If you want more details about DaVinci Resolve, please check this video. The link should be on the screen and in the description. So in DaVinci Resolve, just import the PNG files that you have created in Blender and it should automatically create sequences for you. If it's not the case, you have to go here in the Media tab. You click on those three dots. You go in frame display mode and you select sequence. Okay, so this is the different renders I have created in Blender. So the face, the nose, the eye, and the final shot. Now uh, let's take care of the color grading. So I click on the grading tab and let me grab this clip. Let me activate the grading and maybe deactivate everything so you, we can see one by one what I did. And just for information, if you want to add a node like this, it's um, Alt S on your keyboard, okay, just like this. Or you can come here in color and nodes and add serial node. Okay, for the first node, let me activate it. This is where the main job is done. It means that you can, you could only do this node. You will have the same image. As I told you, in Blender, we chose a filmic for the color. So it was a very flat image. So the first node is very important to give the contrast. And what I did for the contrast, I raised the contrast here to 1.2 instead of 1. And for the shadows, the lift, I went for minus 0.01. And for the highlight, the gain, I went to 1.39. And for the second node, I just added a plugin named Film Convert. 
So if I go in effect, as you can see, it's a field convert and I mainly use it for the filming look and for the grain. It's not bringing that much, but maybe more contrast and this uh, uh, filmic color. And of course, the, there are those grains added to the scene, but you can easily find grains on YouTube for free if you want to add grains also to your to your renders and then for the third node it was only my LUT it's not changing a lot because I lower the intensity so to lower the intensity you just go in key and key output you you can here play with the value of the gain if I put one you will see the difference it's very bluish I could use yes actually it's, it looks cool with this blue this is this is my LUT so I will put the, the link in the description if you want to apply my LUT to your grading too, okay? But for this example, I think I went to well, something like that, very subtle. So it's it's kind of going to the blue, but not that much. But I like the effect like that. And then for the final node, I think I changed the saturation to 42 instead of a 50, just to lower the saturation a little bit. As you can see, it's not bringing a lot, but when I try it with uh, different screens on my MacBook Pro, for example, uh, it looks uh, way better when I lower the saturation here. And as usual, when you have finished the grading of one clip, you can simply copy and paste the grading to all your different clips. Okay, that's it for the color grading. Let me go back. And then I added some um, dust particles. Yeah, you can see them moving around, those, those particles. And for that, I used the Action VFX footage. I will put the, the link in the description. And I also added the cinema scope uh, to have those bars, black bars here, uh, because when you add particles and stuff like that, although we have rendered uh, our uh, animation in a cinematic ratio, it's not the case for the different particles. So I have to add a mask like this to create manually those bars. And for that, I just use a PSD file. I will put this PSD file in the description as well if you want to have it. So yeah, that's it. This is how I did the Raptor animation. If you want me to have another video to cover the sound, because this is a big chapter as well, just uh, ask me in the comment section. As usual, guys, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. And thanks for watching, and I talk to you soon. Bye-bye.